Greetings. Welcome to the second video that I'm making on my series on the flavorful world of vanilla. Now, in this video, I will be doing the experiment where I extract vanilla from vanilla sugar. But before we get into the physical experiment, I would just like to quickly go over the chemicals that I will be using. So, first we have the methanol. Now, methanol is a fairly small and simple molecule. It consists of one carbon with three hydrogens attached to it and one hydroxyl group attached to it. Now, methanol will be my solvent for dissolving the vanilla from the vanilla sugar. And you might be wondering, why exactly is this methanol a purplish color when normally it is clear and colorless? And the answer for that is that the manufacturers put in this purple dye so that people do not get the methanol mixed up with water as methanol is highly toxic and if you drink it, you probably will not survive. Now, our second ingredient that we'll be using is of course our vanilla sugar. Now, this vanilla sugar only has two ingredients in it. The first is sugar or sucrose and the other is ethyl vanillin. Now, ethyl vanillin is not the naturally occurring vanilla. It is 100% synthetically made. Now you might be wondering what is the difference between our normal vanilla and our ethyl vanilla. And structurally, the difference is over here in our methyl group. As you can see, after our oxygen over here, we only have one carbon. However, in ethyl vanilla, we have a two carbon chain. Now, you might be wondering, is there any difference in the flavor? And the answer to that is yes. Ethyl vanilla tends to have a much stronger scent and flavor to it. In general, the baking manufacturers, they use ethyl vanilla because it has that much stronger flavor. Now, of course, our other ingredient in the vanilla sugar is plain sugar or sucrose. And you might be wondering, why does it matter? And it matters because sucrose is a lot heavier than our ethyl vanilla. Sucrose consists of 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens, which if you add up the mass of all of those atoms, it brings it up to a molecular mass of 270. On the other hand, our ethyl vanilla only has nine carbons, 10 hydrogens, and three oxygens, which when you add it all up, leads to a molecular mass of only 151. Now, I'm telling you this so that you are not disappointed that we isolated such a small amount of ethyl vanilla, because the reality is only a very small amount of ethyl vanilla is needed to give the sugar this strong vanilla flavor. Now, let's get into our experiment. Now, our first step in our experiment is to measure out our two ingredients. So over here, I have measured out 120 grams of vanilla sugar. And in my other beaker, I have measured out approximately 200 milliliters of methanol. However, to begin with, I will only be adding 100 milliliters of the methanol into my beaker with vanilla sugar. And once I add my methanol, I will just stir it for a few minutes to make sure that all the vanilla sugar comes into contact with the methanol so that the vanilla gets dissolved. Now I have added my methanol. I will stir it for a few minutes. Now I have been stirring my vanilla sugar for around five minutes. So I think it's ready to start filtering. So over here I have my funnel with my filter paper and this will be just a plain gravity fil filtration. So I am going to pour I am going to pour it in now 
I'm going to pour the vanilla and vanilla sugar. As you can see, there's still quite a lot of the vanilla sugar stuck uh, in the beaker, which is why we have this extra methanol. With So now that we put all our vanilla sugar over here, we will just wait a few minutes and let it filter out. So 10 minutes have passed since I have started my gravity filtration and I believe it is about done. So now what we have in the funnel over here is just plain sugar, which you can just put in the bin. All right, so now I have finally finished gravity filtering my vanilla sugar. So over here, it should just be the methanol with the vanillin. So what I'm going to do now is I will put put it on my hot plate and let my methanol evaporate. Now, if I had the equipment, I could actually distill the methanol instead and recover it. However, unfortunately, I do not have the equipment to do it, so it will not be possible. Now, methanol has a melting point of roughly 61 degrees Celsius, so it will not take long for the methanol to start evaporating. And in the end, we should only have our vanillin and dye left in our beaker. It has been 10 minutes and the methanol has started to boil. Now, my methanol evaporated. So what I did afterwards is I waited for my beaker to cool down. Then I put some water in it so that the vanillin could recrystallize. And to help it recrystallize further, I put it in a ice bath. And I just left it there for now. After being in the ice bath for 10 minutes, as you can see over here, the vanillin has actually separated rather nicely. So what I'm going to do now is I will filter it out and see if I can actually separate it from our water. So now I will filter it out. After filtering the vanillin, we finally have our product over here. As you can see, it is a yellow sort of powderish crystal. And, and it definitely has that distinct vanilla scent to it. And it's very strong as well. And now, unfortunately, my balance is not precise enough. So I wasn't able to weigh uh, or see the mass of my yield. However, as you can see, it is a small amount. However, it is still visible and you will be able to see it. And in the lab where we have more precise balance scales, we will be able to see how much we actually got. That was our experiment. Now, before I end the video, I would just like to give out a list of possible changes that you could make uh, in the lab to make this experiment a little bit easier on yourself. So to begin with, I would definitely use more vanilla sugar. Now I, I used 120 grams as I didn't really have enough space to do more. However, if you have bigger filter funnels and bigger filter paper, I would definitely consider doing between 150 and 200 grams of vanilla sugar instead so that you can get a much greater yield of the vanillin. Secondly, what I'll say is it doesn't matter how much of the methanol you use as long as all of the vanilla sugar comes into contact with the methanol so that it can dissolve the vanillin from the sugar. Clearly what I'll say is avoid using dyed methanol as the dye will not evaporate with the methanol, but instead it will stick to the beaker and it will mix with the vanillin, which makes isolating it a little bit more difficult. However, despite that, 
as you can see, we still managed to isolate it and it is a nice yellow color and not a purple color. After that, my fourth point is if you wanted, instead of using a gravity filtration, you can actually vacuum filter uh, all of the times, which will speed up the process by a large amount. However, it does also increase the chance of you finding more impurities in your solvent. And the last point that I'll say is if you can monitor the temperature while you are boiling your methanol and keep it between 65 and 70 degrees Celsius as above 70 degrees Celsius, your vanillin starts to melt and it will become a liquid and it increases the chance that when, while you're cooling it down, it sticks to the bottom of the beaker. And methanol has a boiling point of roughly 61 degrees Celsius, so the methanol is still boiling. Now, that's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, you found it informative, and that you might even try this experiment yourself if you find the right equipment. Uh, see you in the next video where I will discuss about a few other tests that you can do after you isolate your vanillin.